Welcome to the X Corner. I'm here to add a little mutation to the superhero crew. I'll be covering the X comics for the week of January 17th, 2018. This week we have five comics and an after credit scene. All new Wolverine 29, Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan 4, Generation X 86, Weapon X 13, X-Men Gold 20, and the Wolverine after credit scene in Mighty Thor 703. There are spoilers, of course. We'll start with all new Wolverine 29. The writer is Tom Taylor and the pencil is Juan N. Cabal. And this is the Orphans of X Part 5. The story of the Orphans of X taking revenge on the Wolverine family continues. Laura, Dakin, and Gabby are getting magical armor made to protect them from weapons that can kill immortals. But the Orphans find them. And they come in the form of the Hand who are working with them, so it seems. The three fight the undead ninjas and all looks lost until Laura dons the armor to fight back. Dakin hatches a plan and gets himself captured, but really he's put Laura's aunt's cell phone inside him so he, they could track him. Gorgon, the leader of the Hand, shows up, but he apologizes and says that the ones who attacked did so without his consent. He gives Gabby and Laurie a ride to find Dakin and the orphan's home base. They break in and find Dakin's dead, but Laura plans to do some brain surgery to take the immortal killing bullets out of his brain so that he can heal. This story continues to be good, and the next issue promises to be the last, so we'll get to see the Wolverine family kick some butts. Gabby is still the standout of the series. At one point she gets shot, but she's more concerned that she got some zombie ninja bits in her mouth, and was worried it might be contagious. Dakin is really good here, he's a bit out of character, especially compared to his version in Iceman, but I prefer the morally great Dakin over the evil one there. The only thing bad I can say about this book is that the magic armor looks a little ridiculous. Laura looks like she has a salad bowl on her head. Other than that, the series has been constantly good through its entire run, and I'm glad it wasn't one of the books on the chopping block. 8 out of 10. Then we have Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan number 4. The writer is Declan Shelby, and the penciler is Mike Henderson. Last issue left us with a cliffhanger having Deadpool show up with Old Man Logan's claws. It seems the girl they are saving, who has the power to teleport any non-living thing from anywhere, teleported Wolverine's claws into Deadpool. Deadpool starts going nuts, or more nuts, killing everyone with the claws until Logan has the girl give them back. Then Logan goes nuts killing everyone. There's a lot of dismemberment in this book. Anyway, Deadpool and the girl run away to escape while Logan finishes the bad guys. But before Logan finishes the job, the evil scientist tells Logan something, and it seems the girl might not be all that good after all. Logan confronts Deadpool, and they fight, but eventually the girl teleports the whole facility above them as a literal cliffhanger. This issue was hilarious throughout. The whole series of scenes at the beginning, starting with Deadpool saying snucked instead of snicked, to Deadpool's murderous yet humorous killing spree, and then Deadpool saying, you literally disarmed me when Logan cuts off his hand. It had me chuckling. That's the joy of this comic. It gives you just enough Deadpool not to be oversaturated. Uh, the girl's turn at the end was a little weird though, since it seems she could have just gotten out of there anytime she wanted, but we'll see where the last issue goes. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Next we have Generation X 86. The writer is Christina Strain and the penciler is Amilcar Pina. It's Survival of the Fittest Part 2 and this issue starts off with Jubilee going to get Quentin back and it ties up everything that's been going on with him since this comic began. In Thor, he'd fought the Phoenix and gotten a piece of it inside him, but no mention had been, ever been made of it since. Well, we find all that happened between when he left the school and now. Thank you, continuity. So Jubilee tries to convince Quentin that the X-Men are his home and to come back so that she can make him believe it. But meanwhile, the school is being attacked by Monet, who has been hunting down and draining mutants there. Page and Chamber face off against her in an original Generation X reunion, but they are getting beat before Jubilee shows up with Quentin to turn the tide. Monet, though, rips off the necklace of Jubilee, allowing her to survive in daylight, since she is a vampire after all, and tosses her outside to burn. Quentin unleashes the Phoenix Force fragment inside of him in what you think is an attack on Monet, but in reality he gives Jubilee her powers back and makes her not a vampire. Dun dun dun. The interactions in this book shine. The blooming romance between Nathaniel and Benjamin is touching. Quentin coming back after you see his heartbreaking childhood is great. Even Lynn and Roxy have moments that will affect him in the future. It's so well written that the art doesn't seem as jarring as usual. The only problem with this book is that it's going away. I understand that probably no one is reading it, but it deserves better. 
Maybe once the industry moves away from the physical medium to all digital books, things like this might be able to survive with a much smaller audience. 8 out of 10. Next we have Weapon X13. The writer is Greg Pak, and the penciler is Yindel Ray Sinar. It's Nuke Clear War Part 2. In this dissertation on politics and war, we see Sabretooth and the original nuke fight a whole bunch of other nukes for quite a few pages. The Weapon X crew go in to destroy the pills that give the nukes their powers, so the original nuke turns on them and teams with the other nukes to kill the Weapon Xers. It ends with Sabretooth suggesting they take the nuke pills to fight nuke and the other nukes. Last issue I said it felt refreshing to get a comic that is pure adrenaline. The problem with that is that you can't keep it up without losing any semblance of caring. The highlights of this issue are Domino suggesting they rob a bank, as usual, and I can't wait to see what Gail Simone does with her solo comic. Other than that, this is just a bunch of nukes shooting at immortal people with claws for 25 pages. I think I'm losing patience, and I don't want to say nuke anymore. 4 out of 10. The last real comic this week is X-Men Gold number 20, and the writer is Mark Guggenheim and the penciler is Land Medina. It's the Negative Zone War Part 5, but this issue should be called the Negative Zone War Epilogue. The X-Men crashed their ship last issue, and this one finds them scattered across an alien desert planet. Storm's powers aren't working, so she has to kill an obligatory giant bug with a spear. Kitty is holding the dying Colossus in her arms, and he says for her to leave him. Nightcrawler is impaled once again, I'm starting to see a theme here, but Ink heals him with his healing tattoo. Logan and Armor find Kurt and Ink, and Storm finds Kitty and Peter, and they all get back together to get MacGuffin home from a magical spaceship crystal. Once there, Kitty realizes she doesn't want to leave Colossus ever again, and proposes. This issue was beautifully drawn. The writing, though, which I usually gush over, was cliched and rushed. The whole issue was not necessary. They could have had Peter hurt in the actual Negative Zone War, and thus Kitty realizing she wants to spend the rest of her life with him. This was the definition of filler issue. It saddens me to say this, but 5 out of 10. Lastly, we have that post credit scene from Mighty Thor 703. The writer is Jason Aaron, and the penciler is Lanille Francis Yu. So, yet another post credit scene with Wolverine in a random comic. This one is the Mighty Thor with Jane Foster dying of cancer in the hospital. I don't read this comic, but flipping through to get to the Wolverine part, I was already depressed. So the page in question has Wolverine dropping off flowers to Jane in the hospital. That's it. I never knew Wolverine ever met Jane Foster. Maybe somewhere in Avengers, I guess? The nurse asks him if he wants to leave a card so she knows who it's from, and he rudely just walks away. It's probably because she'd read the card, and it would say from Logan, and she'd die of cancer confused because she doesn't know any Logans. I won't rate this, but I'll keep you up to date, loyal watchers, so you don't have to waste your hard-earned money on these. Well, that's about it for the corner. After the high of last week, even the 8s here feel a bit hollow. And no Phoenix Resurrection! Did they fall behind schedule already? Oh well, now I have to scrub my brain of nuke and cancer-ridden Jane Foster. Thanks, Marvel. See you next time!